We're live on Spiritual Psychics TV with Paul Bannister and his guests for Spiritual Talk. Hi everybody and Merry Christmas. Welcome to Spiritual Talk here on our home at SPTV. It's good to see you all here. I hope you've all had a wonderful time over Christmas and not eaten too much turkey like I did. And I hope you're ready. We have another brilliant interview tonight, guys. But Please, before we start, can you guys help us? We're not streaming live into Facebook. We've had uh, Mr. Grinch. He's kicked off on Facebook. He's been doing his nasty stuff on Facebook. So we need your help, guys. Can you copy and paste the link into Facebook so as many people can see our wonderful guests we've got this evening? And most of you will recognize our guests that we have this evening. We have the brilliant... Bill Hughes from Collective Consciousness. It's normally straight after me at eight o'clock, but not tonight. It's Christmas and Bill's having a well-earned rest. So, but guys, let us know where you're coming in from. We are looking out for your comments. We always like to know what part of the world you're coming in from. And let us know if the Grinch has been in your Christmas as well. What's been happening? What you've been doing? Let us know you're there. It'd be good to see you. We've got no comments coming up at the moment. And up. Uh, and I'm, uh, here we go. Serendipity. Hi. Hi, Serendipity. I hope you've had a great Christmas. And hi, Terry. Good to see you. Good to see you. And she's also saying, oh, uh, couldn't have a show without David watching. Hello, David. Hope you're well, my friend. I hope you've had a good Christmas. And Stace. Hi, Stace. Good to see you here. Uh, and Happy New Year to everyone as well, because it won't be long. It'll be soon be uh, 2024. Hi, Christine. And she's Christine's already celebrating 2024. She's got it up in her in her profile picture. But don't forget to copy and paste the link, guys. We really appreciate that to get it onto Facebook. Because the old Mr. Grinch has been around trying to uh, disrupt our program tonight. Never mind. We'll crack on. We won't let the Grinch. Um, also, guys, has anyone been watching Elf over Christmas? My favourite Christmas film. It's got to be, isn't it, Elf? Or let us know what, what is your favourite Christmas film as we're waiting for people to come on. Just come and say hello. And don't forget to tell us what part of the world you're coming in from. So should we, unless I uh, was that's kind of slow down, Richard, so I'm not sure if people are watching. So we're, we're hoping we are going straight into, if you guys can copy and paste that link into Facebook, that'll be brilliant. That would be fantastic. Yes, but yeah, let's just yes, let's go straight into our guest. And guys, it, this gentleman needs no introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill Hughes, medium and psychic, and also healer. Bill, hello. Hello, Paul. Thank you for having me on your show. How are you? I'm good, and it's a long time. It's been a long time coming. So I'm so pleased you're here. As at last, I've managed to catch you at Christmas time. Thank you for coming on, and thank you for agreeing to be interviewed. So don't worry, we won't ask you any awkward questions about the millions of pounds that you won on the lotto over you Christmas. You promised not to say that. <laughs> I did, I did. But wouldn't that be nice? Would, be I've lovely. kind of spent mine already in my head when I win it one day. <laughs> Bill, we, we like to know, though, Bill, how you became a medium. We always ask our guests what, where it all started. You know, was you a sensitive as a child or was this something, you know, that you found you had later in life? I was child sensitive and um, my own dad transitioned to spirit when I was 11 um, he was only 42 God love him and uh, he passed away from brain tumor oh. and it was about six months after dad died that I started to sense feel see smell um, I used to suffer from nosebleeds really badly as a child and one evening I was in bed called out for mum had a nosebleed, bum came up, went to sit on the end of the bed, said, don't sit there because that's where dad is. And she oh. went as white as a sheep, minus the blood spot, spots, of course. Um, she thought that she had a child that was absolutely bonkers and mad. And that was really the beginnings to start understanding spirit and its communication and the afterlife, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry to hear about your dad, but... And at such a young age, it's quite a profound thing to happen. Yeah. 
and and grief at any age is a difficult thing but to lose a, a loved one as a child a parent as a child it must be particularly difficult did you find though going through growing up you still had that sensitivity was it always there for you yeah it never left i think from the moment that it made itself apparent i became um conscious and aware um it grew it evolved and um, throughout my teenage life i would always frequent going to the local spiritualist churches and centers yeah. yeah and i'd often watch mediums up on platform i'd just go to soak in the ambience and the healing if anything um but yeah, it evolved all throughout my adult life. But as you you know yourself, you know, um, your interests change and the opposite sex came into or onto the agenda and spirit kind of like took a step back. I suppose they allowed me to grow and evolve naturally as I should do within my own human form and understanding. And it yeah. wasn't really until my late 30s, early 40s, um, that I started to become a lot more conscious that there was this need to want to evolve. There was this need to want to learn and understand and fine tune what it was that I already knew. I hope you don't mind me talking about this, Bill, but I kind of want to get a little bit serious quite quickly in terms of because a lot of people that are sensitive growing yeah. up struggle with social interaction of their peers and even socialising, going out, being in a public environment, feeling sensitivity in, in a pub, you, you can feel that aggression when there's going to be a fight. Mm -hmm. You know things are going to happen before they happen. How did you manage that, your energy around that? Was that something you just thought maybe everyone has this experience or was you aware, consciously aware at an early age? Yeah, I, th I think I could read and understand the vibration or the energy that was coming off of others. Yeah. Um, I was very fortunate that my sister, my older sister, um, was very spirit sensitive herself. So I would always go to her with questions or indeed the minister at my local spiritualist church. Um, and I would go to, to himself with questions of things that I couldn't quite understand or grasp the concept of. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I very much became conscious of energy exchange vibration, a feeling of not wanting to be in a certain place at a certain time or being yeah. around certain individuals. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that can be quite challenging. And, and if you're sensitive and that word sensitive it is quite, it's quite a difficult experience for a young lads growing up and trying to find their place in the world yeah. it can and, and i can speak from some experience with this i was always i always felt even in a in a pub i knew when there was going to be a fight i felt that energy around me but it was i didn't realize i just thought it was what everyone had that experience and it wasn't until later that i started to realize that i was on my own so managing that energy i was able to then go through life a lot easier understanding that it was a part of me rather than than of what i am if that makes sense rather than it being something separate so it is a difficult and something that i think guys that are mediums don't really talk about this our sensitive side and uh, i think it's something when we can be more open and honest about it and not I, I mean it's easier for girls forgive me for saying this ladies they're more in tune with their feelings. They're more able to express and understand that emotion where guys, we kind of got all these different ideas going on. It's difficult to manage, but in going through life and, and was dad an influence around this or not as a, even as a younger, younger child? I have very little memories of dad up into the age of when um, he passed. And I don't know whether or not that's the body or the brain's way of naturally just shutting things off from yeah. you um, until you're at a point where you're ready to understand. But I'm very fortunate to know that I always had dad stand beside me. Yeah. So what I didn't have throughout my childhood, I've gained throughout my adult years yeah. um, with my own spiritual life so to speak yeah yeah 
yeah, yeah. Stace has asked a question. Hi, Stace. What is the most embarrassing, funniest moments you ever had given a message on platform or online, Bill? And I imagine, Bill, you've had quite a few. Just a few. I always tend to get the naughty spirit. I always tend to get the naughty communicator that wants to push the buttons just a little bit. And as you know, Paul, being a, a medium and serving out on platform yourself, especially when we are in um, churches which have an affiliation, we have yes. to be very careful with regards to the way that we deliver and convey those messages. Yeah. Um, so I always have to kind of like tone things down and put it in a slightly different context to how that communicator would like me to put it across yeah um but i mean just one of the funniest moments was just a few weeks back when um we were bringing collective consciousness to a close and we had a communicator that wanted to put me in a position of um showing me a film with um a gentleman that was stood with no clothing on and was carrying a rose in a very precarious position um, <laughs> on his body. <laughs> okay. Again, it was that communicator's way of just bringing out the sense of his character. And yeah. luckily, luckily, um, the recipient took absolutely everything that it was that he brought forward to share that evening. So um, that was probably one of the funniest yet challenging moments so, of popping a message across yeah i kind of want to um ask a question on that because some people would say well give you know give what you get now does it water it down if we try to you know like you said we're in certain establishments where we got to turn it down a little bit do you not think that has an impact on the message because that gentleman could have actually done that yeah, you know, for real. And it was a great point of evidence. But because of the the, the uh, principles or the, the rules governing that particular establishment, you can't express that. Then that surely that waters down the connection. I know there's, there's reasons why we have rules, why they, these establishments create these rules. I totally get it. I'm not criticizing that. I'm just wondering, does that have an impact on the message itself? I'm sure it would do. I mean, luckily, it, it was a message that came through and it was online and, you know, I could openly and freely be as expressive as that communicator wanted me to yeah. be. Um, have I been put in similar positions serving publicly? Yes. But most of the public um, demonstrations have been um, solo dens that have been held outside of establishments that don't come with an affiliation to them yeah. so you have a little bit more as you say freedom and flexibility with the way that you convey that message yeah um does it water it down when you're serving in church and center yes it does i think it, yeah. it does um yeah. but we have to stick to those rules and guidelines if we want to be invited back to serve there, there is a fine line of course, and there is this thing where we can be too over the top, and it, there, there is and humour as well. Spirit want to project that humour um, and laughter, but there is where well, it can become distasteful. So there, I, I understand why these rules are in place, and I wasn't criticising that. Actually, serendipities ask a really interesting question: What do the NHS say when you you're told? We told them you speak to dead people. <laughs> I've got an interesting story after you, after you, Bill. I think you should fire away first. On this okay, one. I went. I went to see a, a, a GP who has booked me in for a brain scan because uh, that's one of the reasons how I started in '97. They found uh, uh, a large lump in the back, which is I've just had my hair cut, so you can see I've got a scar going on in the back there, um, and it's not a mill wall away scar. Okay, can I say, being an Norwich supporter, it is definitely NHS scar. And basically, um, I went to see a GP over something really, I had a Veruca that wouldn't go away. And I literally came out there with a brain scan appointment. So, wow. <laughs> so when I said, because she asked me how, um, how I hear spirit. And I said, well, I start off, I get a ringing and a change in tone. And then I start to hear them or oh, more, but it could be a sign. I mean, I mean, it's lovely that, that, that they've made this appointment for me, but I kind of feel like I'm wasting their time. So I guess it's, a, again, challenging people's ideas, isn't it? You've mm. gone in there. Uh, and I remember another story from a psychic surgeon 
surgeon, psychic surgeon, a psychic artist, I should say. Um, she went to her doctor and said, um, I've been struggling lately, she said, because I've been drawing dead people. And her doctor turned around and said to her, now, um, <laughs> now look here, just as great you can tell me, just don't tell anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant absolutely brilliant luckily you... i've not been in a position where i've had to talk to any medical professional with regards to my abilities yeah. to understand spirit communication hence the reason why i threw it over to you paul to answer well well the, the thing is though mate to be honest i mean obviously the witchcraft act was only abolished off in the 50s because of obviously helen duncan but you know we have come so far but in other ways we haven't there's still a lot of prejudice no. and rightly so there is the thing within the movement but where you could argue there's people that are not so ethical out there and i understand that uh you do need some discernment when you're, you're trying to book a reading in terms of you know when you're looking to to book a reading with someone but i think it's really interesting that that um people's ideas and belief systems they're still very much against what we do and i understand that and, and i don't know about you bill you must have had lots of people that have come to you that are on the fence very much so uh, and you know what paul i've just grown a very thick skin yeah because we're not always going to be somebody's cup of tea. We'll certainly yeah. be somebody's cup of coffee. Um, is it is it our onus or the onus on our shoulders to actually prove to somebody that's a non-believer that there is um, existence of the uh, eternal soul? Yeah, that that's another question that we could you know throw yeah. into it. Here. Is yeah. is it is it our onus to do so? No, I think. Nine times out of ten, the people that come to see us when we're publicly demonstrating, they come to us for private readings, you're 95% of the way there because they're already a believer. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. going to be challenged. You're going to have the mickey taken out of you. I've learned very, very quickly over a short space of time to grow a thick skin. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely absolutely and i used to work in uh for a certain football club uh, i'm not going to mention it because i always do uh, but some of the some of the guys there used to know what i used to do but uh, collectively they would criticize individually if they were interested and and that's mm -hmm. but that's okay too that is okay too totally and, and marie's asked a great question i've always felt things well when i was young do you agree all children have this but goes away? Well, it did for me. I think children are highly, highly sensitive. This is one of the things that I'm really passionate about, which is the yeah. younger generation, because they are so much more conscious than I believe we ever were growing yeah. up as children. Yeah. They have evolved. Now, you know, you see kiddies that are really interested in, for example, crystals and the yeah. properties of crystals, what it is that they emit, what it is that they can do for them. And I just feel that we're really kind of like missing a niche here because of, you know, making sure that children are protected and the laws and regulations that go with it. We could run schools of excellence yeah. For youngsters, obviously, they've got to be of an age of maturity and have a great level of understanding. Yeah. Um, but we could have schools of excellence where we could be developing the mediums of the future at a younger age. And can you imagine, can yeah. you imagine how phenomenal some of these kids would actually grow and evolve into? Yeah. yeah. Well, look at Gordon. I mean, he's a great example gordon higginson the late great gordon higginson and his mother obviously being a medium she sat him down was he free when he started it was really early age where he was made to Very sit young. in a circle and he <laughs> wasn't alone in that and that was quite common with parents that were mediums mm. uh, and how they used to school their children which i think is a really good thing but unfortunately we do live in difficult times in terms of social media being a distraction even me the other day and i've if my son's listening, I apologise for burning his dinner uh, because I was caught up on something <laughs> online. So, but but that's a real thing for lots of us. We're becoming almost consciously unconscious in our world. And so, how do we move that forward? I mean, what do you do as a practice to help you to connect with spirit? Is it something you do on a daily basis, Bill, that helps you, or 
I always try to sit within my own space of time, my own power. Some people yep. may call that. Whether that be 10 minutes, half an hour, an hour, I just go with what it is that I have available at the time to do so. Yeah. Um, I, I find that I'm doing um, it less frequently for longer periods of time now um, as opposed to the earlier days. Um, but maybe that's probably because I'm more attuned or I'm more accustomed and I'm yeah. used to, as opposed to building up that momentum when we first start out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I always like to at least sit for a minimum of 10 minutes, just within that space, that quietness, that yeah. peace, um, having my own team meeting. Here's a question for you. This is me being a bit nosy. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm just going to go for it. When you're on platform, Bill, yeah and and i know there'll be a lot of mediums that uh, hopefully they'll like this question <laughs> but when you know you've got a difficult one coming in and you know that someone's died instantly they're a young man they've taken their life and how do you manage suicide and people that come whether it's live on a platform or because i've seen different mediums different styles of course and people have different experiences around suicide but it's such a common thing today um and i had a recent experience but it's how do you deal with that i think we have to have a certain amount of empathy yeah and we need to be making sure that we're working within that context when we're delivering such sensitive information. And again, we have to be conscious if it is on a public platform that we are giving just as much as that recipient needs to hear in order to be able to establish that that is the correct link that we are um, working with. Um, yeah. It's funny you say that because my last public dem, solo dem that I'd done, I had two murders and one suicide in one oh, night. And I was wow. like, spirit, what are you doing to me? Yeah. And I, I, we're always taught, I don't know if, you, if this was a case for you, Paul, but I was always taught through that developmental process that emotionally we have to be in control of that message at all times. And it got me. It, yeah. got me, it choked me up. It brought tears to my eyes. Yeah. I actually had to kind of like take a 10 second breather, refocus, recenter before going back into it. But I'm yeah. always conscious that when I'm dealing with very sensitive information in that respect, for example, if it's a suicide, I will always convey message um, that, let's say, for example, this gentleman that I've got with me, he gives me an understanding that his life ended through his own hands. Yeah. We don't need to go for the golden nugget or the cherry on the cake moment and say, yeah. he's telling me he young himself and he was found in the forest in the woods or whatever. Let's just make sure that we're delivering it in such a beautiful context that it brings healing and potentially a little piece of closure to that yeah. recipient in the way that we're doing that delivery. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's really, really important. And I've seen mediums uh, and, and well, there's two two things now. But the firstly, I'll come back to being able to control the emotion of the message. Mm -hmm. But then you're not human if you don't feel some of the because. And that's one thing I, I always not frustrates me that I'd like to be able to be more eloquent to, to deliver the love that I feel from the person that's coming in from the loved one. I wish I could describe it in a way that created that ability for them to feel the love and the magic from the other side yeah. and that your father's here, how much he loves you. And, you know, and he's showing me the memories of you as a child and, and you then instantly feel that love of them. That's the Holy grail. Yeah. You know, but you're not human. We've all had loss in our life. You know, and, and there will be times when you link it to your experience. I mean, my best friend took his own life by his own hand. And and so when I get serious, I have to really control it because it brings stuff up within me. Maybe I've not dealt with that. I don't know. But but he actually works with me. 
so now which is lovely he came in uh, a, a couple of years ago and he's been sticking around i know he's there because he always takes the mickey out of me which he always used to do <laughs> oh, lovely. Uh, and put me into difficult embarrassing situations which he always <laughs> used to do <laughs> but but i think there's a the part of that uh, um keeping control it's okay to show emotion and my personal belief and i think i think that's more power to you but then there's also where I've seen mediums visibly give messages and then I, I'll see the person so overwhelmed that um, like you can see they can't do it. And, and, but they'll still go because it's the, it's a drama and I, I stop it mm. and I'll stop it and I'll, I'll give what I need to give. Um, but I, obviously there's a healing element to that, but it's, it's such a difficult subject to work with isn't it oh really? serendipity i'm so sorry serendipity i always get carried away if you've been watching me you know what i'm like um she's put my mum's a christian and is very suspicious of mediums she doesn't know i go here you're in trouble i'm joking of course i'm joking um when she passes over she will not communicate with a medium i guess this is a question you can answer over to you bill do you know i've had communicators that have come through um, from all different walks of religious beliefs mm. and life and I just feel <clears throat> and believe that if they want to make that communication they want to convey message they will do so yeah you know I've had spirit that have come in and connected with me that have kind of like given me, for example, the sign of the cross and have told me about their own religious beliefs when they were here on the earth plane, but how wonderful it is on the other side and how great it is that they found this vessel, i.e. the medium, to be able to convey and pass message to their loved ones that are still yeah. here on the earth plane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so really it's their, their, their belief system that is holding them back, but when they become more enlightened on passing that they hopefully can see that actually hang on a minute I've, maybe i've got it slightly wrong i'm not saying you know what they're doing is wrong uh i do have a really strong faith in creator i don't know about you bill but i do i mean i never used to i i grew up in a very working class family but now i have that so i'm kind of blessed that i have that so so what's the difference between christian and medium i mean you could sit here and argue that jesus was a medium the ultimate medium uh but we're not getting to that we could be here all day but <laughs> I, um i too have had the similar experience and it's really interesting that you've said that and, and people that uh, that don't believe as well that's another level mm. i remember reading for a lady that uh, she came the second time about three years after the first reading and i said oh your grandfather's here which I wasn't expecting. Uh, and he's apologizing to me. He's saying, I'm so sorry, I didn't believe in this. And I told her not to come the last time. And she laughed out loud and said, yes, he did. He, did. he told me not to waste my money. So <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was uh, pure gold. So don't honestly, serendipity, do, I don't believe that your mum would be that way. Your mom, I always believe that love is the strongest power in the universe. And if she loves yeah. you, she'll always come close to you so absolutely. absolutely i totally agree yeah yeah so yeah but um what i was going to ask you bill you've got some new projects coming up oh, actually before before we start talking about that i want to remind people because we're just on youtube live tonight we're not going across facebook because mr grinch has been out so if you guys can uh, copy and paste the link into facebook we'd really appreciate that but yes bill i know you've got a lot of stuff coming on coming up but i wanted to talk about collective consciousness Oh. Award award winning show that's been going for what three years, three and a half years, three and a half years, and and can you just why have you stopped, Bill? I We're gonna miss stopped. you. We're gonna uh, we're gonna miss you. Do you know? Pay me the money. <laughs> yeah, if you're getting a rise, I want to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah why did i why did why did i make that decision um look I'm, richard will will i'm sure um back me up with what it is that i'm about to say 
we always have these chats, as I'm sure you do, at the end of every live transmission when we're off screen. And we have that chat with Richard and he lets us know how things have gone and how many um, views we've had and, and, and what have you, how many shares, et cetera, et cetera. And that's another thing, guys. Don't forget oh, can I just say, I'm a bit jealous. Can I just say, I'm, I'm a bit jealous, Bill, because I'm always being told to start off because Bill's coming on. <laughs> 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 well, maybe now, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, so we, listen, I'm deviating. Look, we would um, we would often have these chats, and I've always always said um, from day one to Richard, you will know or I will know when it's time to call it. Everything in life has an expiry. Yeah. Everything has an expiry date, and. Um, you know, it's been the most phenomenal experience and part of the biggest part of my spiritual growth. And I've poured my heart and soul into the show, as I say, for the last three and a half years. I have shared the platform with some phenomenal, phenomenal mediums. And I would never have had that opportunity within the physical sense to have shared that space yeah. in such a short space of time. Yeah. If I was doing that through churches, centres, or public demonstrations, Gosh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've I've had I've made some amazing, amazing friends, um, you know, through the shows. But I just got to a point where I said to Richard, one, it's getting harder to find the calibre of mediums that people are used yeah. to seeing on the show. I, yeah. I could go live with collective consciousness Monday through to Sunday yeah. and fill that slot with any medium, but would they be right for the channel? No, they would not. Would yeah. they be right for the show? No, they wouldn't. And at the end of the day, yeah. you know as well as I do that when you're bringing people onto your shows, you are endorsing them. Yes, of course. You're endorsing yeah. them. Not yeah. to say that we are the, the be all and the end all by any means whatsoever. Let's push that to one side. But I don't want to be in a position where I'm endorsing somebody that's not maybe put into um, their own development, the work, the ethic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was getting difficult to find mediums that match the same vibration and worked yeah. within the same ethos and ethics as myself. Um, to family life. Logistically, you know, family life has changed somewhat. Um, and the kids have been fantastic. My kids, um, you know, they really kind of like let me grow into my own. And they have kind of like, I suppose, allowed family life to go on the back burner for dad to be able to do what it is yeah. that he does. Yeah. Um, yeah. And three, new 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 adventures new beginnings new opportunities yeah um mm -hmm. so it was the hardest the hardest decision to make but i think it was the right decision at the right time yeah yeah and that's that paul <laughs> yeah no absolutely but when you think about you know do you ever think about the amount of people you help do you ever stop to think about the amount of people you help with those messages? No. And I, I, this, isn't a, this isn't a guilt thing. I'm just trying to say thank you because you're offering a service that is free. And, and Richard's philosophy around SBTV is fantastic. Free to the point of service. Yeah. You, know, you can't get that anywhere unless you're going to a church. But even then, there's a donation. Mm -hmm. um, so... So, so yeah, it's a wonderful thing that you've done for the last three, three and a half years. It, it really is. But you've also put mediumship on the map. Uh, yes, there's a lot of people now because of COVID going online. And that's not a bad thing. But there's a whole plethora now. And things are getting watered down. And like you said, it's difficult to find the quality because everyone's jumping on, calling themselves a medium. and go, and which, Which is great if they're good. Absolutely. Good. Good to serve. Absolutely. But what next for you, Bill? What's the next challenge? Again, you don't have to answer that, but we are really interested <laughs> in what's coming up. Because you're not severing ties. Am I right, little little Robin? I'm not little severing, bird? No, I'm not severing ties. I think for the as I say, for the show, it was the right time 
for it to go into retirement. Um, will it ever come back? Who knows? You just have to keep watching SPTV to find out. Absolutely. Um, I'll still come back from time to time. You know, Richard and I at the moment have got a few ideas that are going yep. through the cogs and the motions for yep. um, a couple of one-off some things in 2024. Yep. Um, yep. But for me, it's time to listen to what Spirit have been trying to tell me to do. And what I was doing was I was putting it to one side I wasn't I wasn't doing as I was told, Paul. And you know, they <laughs> kept showing me these different openings, these different doors, yeah. um, and these doors opening, and I was just being submissive and just constantly like well, I wasn't being submissive, I was being really like adamant that I wasn't gonna do it. Um and then the minute I announced that collective consciousness was gonna be retired on a public den in Fulham Spiritualist Church two days later and two of the congregation members were ladies that run a spiritualist establishment over in Vienna in Austria and they invited me to be part of their um, 2024 um, service. So oh, wonderful. workshops and uh, private one-to-one readings. So Brilliant. I think that was Spirit's way of saying, ah, there you go, you, there see, you, go. you didn't listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely but you, you're still going to be around we can still find you yeah you still you've still got an online presence as well so absolutely. you're still out there where can we find you uh you can find me on facebook tiktok and instagram bill hugh psychic medium awesome by the way i'm not getting i'm not sure i'm not going anywhere yet i've got loads of questions to ask you bill i hope you don't <laughs> i hope you got the time absolutely uh, david's just come up as well hi david and uh, he's asked, what have been your biggest lessons you've learned along your journey? And I was going to say something similar about, but more the online journey as well, because it's such a brave thing that you do. Uh, you know, it, when lockdown started, I've done demonstrations, but I've never done nothing online. I had this total fear. And there you are, collective consciousness, three and a half years ago, starting up. That was brave. What made you do that? Or did literally. you have a gun to your head? Was Spirit pointing a gun to your head? No, do you know what it was, Paul? I literally stepped out onto the public platform <clears throat> probably six months prior to COVID kicking in. So okay. I just started to publicly serve. Yeah. I was just getting a feel for it. I was just finding my feet. And then Aunt Rona came along and went, wallet, perhaps, some of that. And um, <clears throat> I was like, right, what? What do I do next? And yeah. then Richard started streaming um, the Sunday Divine Service through Wimbledon Spiritualist yeah. Church. And I was invited uh, to be a medium for one of the Sunday services. And after I'd done um, that service, Richard invited me to do a solo den on a Saturday night at SPTV. And then after that, off of the back of that, we had a bit of a discussion and he invited me to have a fortnightly show and i i knew instantly and again he'll verify this i knew instantly he said you know i want you to do something with regards to mediumship what type of ideas have you got and i said i know the name of the show straight away and he said what is it it's a collective consciousness he was like i like that why um and my sister had done me a tarot card reading a few months earlier and um, as I say, she's very um, spirit aware. And yeah. she said to me, I keep getting collective consciousness dropping into my head. She said, remember wow. that we've spoken about that. And that's how the name started. Became. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, it's well known. It is well known yeah. now. A lot of people know that. But coming back to David's question, what has been your biggest lesson? Spiritually or personally, I could tie the two in together. Okay. Okay. What has been the biggest lesson? Oh, hello. Are you still there? Yeah, we're still here. We're still here. You just dropped oh, out. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There There's that go. Grinch again. Someone get that <laughs> Grinch. <laughs> um, I, I, the biggest lesson 
David, in all honesty, and David's great. You probably know, Paul, I've been doing some work publicly with David's phenomenal yeah. medium. You know what? It's great to see him shine in his light. Um, my biggest lesson in life, spiritually and physically, is when somebody shows you their true colours the first time, believe them. Don't oh. give them a second chance. Simple as that. Wow. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's the oh. of the now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Everyone's. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But how do you know you've got that right, though? What if you got it wrong? Do you see? I'm. I'm a bit of a sucker. I try to give people a second chance. No, I don't do it. I've given far too many second chances, far too many times, and those colours have still come through. Still predominant okay okay good still good come lesson. through you know a very a very wise lady said to me a few years back the bigger the smile the longer the knife and she's so oh, true yeah well i trust I, I, it trust it <laughs> if your gut tells you something's not right it's not that's it believe it yeah don't come against it yeah, that's true. That's true. We have this. Apparently, we have a centre here somewhere in between the brow, which is used for discernment. So use that if you can. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not sure if Richard can hear me, but shall we go for a break, Richard? And then we'll come back and we'll come back. So we've got another question. Oh, actually, yeah, we'll come back to that. We'll come back and we'll have a break now because I, I want to cough. I'm still getting over whatever <laughs> lurk it is I've got. And I'm trying not to do it live on there. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Don't forget to copy and paste our link and come back. We're here with Bill for a little while yet. So don't go anywhere. Please stay put. MySpiritualDirectory.com is the one of the fastest growing online free listing service. Our search directory offers geolocation feature, rating ability, review system, map location, customer comment, YouTube video, gallery, social media sharing, direct contact with the lister, simple online booking and payment system. It's free to register and use, it even creates your own mini web page, which you can update at any time, and yes, it's still free, no monthly or yearly fees. 100% free. Creates your own profile page. Add social media and other links. Add a mini gallery and a YouTube video. Rating, reviews and comments. Includes online booking and payments. So, if you're looking for a medium, or a reader, even a church, maybe a healer, or any other spiritual service, then visit MySpiritualDirectory.com. Being inspired to draw spirit, Emily Baker hosts her own mediumship and psychic art show from 6pm tomorrow. Welcome back, guys. You're watching Spiritual Talk here. We're on SPTV and we're live here with my guest, Bill Hughes. And hi, Bill. Welcome back. Um, Siobhan just had a statement there because we were talking about, um, in well, uh, she's her statement is you are basically saying your intuition is correct. So when you get those negative feelings about someone, don't give them a second chance. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It's okay. as simple as that. What you see, you know, what I've learned very quickly in, well, I say very quickly in life, but <laughs> what I've learned very quickly during this phase or this this last five or six years phase yeah. of my life is to trust what it is that you sense and you feel. If it, If they say something, it doesn't sound right. If they do something, it isn't right, then believe it. On the back of that, do you feel that vibration with the voice? Sometimes I can feel that person with the voice. Yeah. And how they yeah. feel. And it sounds very strange for somebody tuning in tonight going, what is he talking about? But that, that can be a real thing, the voice. Yeah. And hearing a voice in communication, it's almost like a hook in my solar plexus. Mm -hmm. So I know it's for that person. Mm -hmm. So, so again, yeah, trust in your intuition, uh, Siobhan. That, that would be, yeah, very good. Don't look, I always think sometimes as well, don't be tough on yourself when you make mistakes because it's a learning curve. At it is a learning day, curve. 
it's it's a le- a life lesson, isn't it? I, yeah. I always like to refer to it as not a mistake, but a lesson, Paul. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, we're only human. Um, yeah. And I truly believe that if we don't understand the lesson that's being presented to us, Spirit will say, there you go. Have it again. Yeah. We'll give it to you in a slightly different context this time. But if you still don't understand it, we're going to throw it back into your lap completely and wait until yeah. you learn your lesson. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hi, Christine. She's, She's asked, asked Bill, Bill, have you ever worked on a missing person case or crime? Oh, I haven't. Apart from being captured on Crime Stoppers, you haven't been. <laughs> no. No, sorry, that's just me. No, I haven't. I haven't. I'd love to, um, <laughs> but I haven't. Yeah, I've had a couple where they've come to me. Um, not sure what to do with it. Um, and one in particular has only come, come to me whilst in church. church. And it was and there's three churches within East Anglia, but it's in the middle of those three churches, which I find really interesting. And I'm not quite sure what to do about it. But yeah, it, it, crime work is a completely different side to it. I, I'm I was aware of a lady that we, we had on the show once that um that she had a missing person case going on uh and the problem was she knew where she, this person was but the last medium had told the police that she was in a quarry they literally dredged this quarry and she wasn't in there so that's the problem you know i can understand why there's some negativity around the police working with mediums that's a lot of money to dredge a dredge a quarry mm-hmm. and to find there's n- nothing there to completely drain it so yeah it's just quite a difficult thing you've really got to be on your stuff with that it's a, it's more of a, a um uh, an individual not individual but more specific kind of area to work in and around but yeah thank you for that question the other thing i was going to ask you because you mentioned about your children earlier mm-hmm. how has your work impacted because i'm sure we've got some stories on this how many children do you have five F- Five. <laughs> you just told us to trust your intuition. <laughs> that was before I started working. <laughs> yeah, I've got five. Wow, wonderful. Now I've got to be honest, I did see a sneaky picture today of your lovely children. Yeah. So how do they feel about your work? They they've always been um they've grown up in an awareness that they used to call it juju magic when they were kids. Dad's doing magic. juju magic. So they were raised with this dual faith understanding because um, their mother is from the Catholic belief. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't really have any faith denomination or following. <laughs> I believe okay. that there is a God. Um, I believe that, you know, um, <clears throat> Everybody perceives God in their own different, unique, individual ways. Um, But I've always been, as I say, very conscious of spirit and then being around us. So when the kids were younger and they were sitting in the corner having a chat to that imaginary friend, (laughs) dad would go into it a little bit deeper. Who are you talking to? What do they look like? What type of clothes do they wear? Yeah. Are their clothes similar to yours or are they from generations before? How are they talking? What do they look like? Explain a little bit more about them to me. Where do they come from? So I always threw that in there so that they kind of like grew up with this awareness that, because my mum, like, you know, when I told her that I saw dad um, and knew that he was around me, I get a kick around here and she goes, shut up, you stupid boy. There's nobody there, you know, because mum was from that generation of like, she was a non-believer to start with. Um, So for me, it was really, really important that as they were growing, that they had this understanding because, you know, I've always said to them, the minute you decide that you want to follow um, your faith or you want to go in a completely different direction, then so be it. That's up to you. But yeah. just allow them to be aware that there's other things going on out there other than what it was that they were being put through with regards to schooling, let's say, for example. Yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. There was no fear? No, no, no fear? fear. From... That's no good. Fear. That, they're all, that's they're good. all spirit sensitive. Oh, some, really? Some, some are clairaudient, some are, are sentient. Um, 
they, they, they've all got an awareness and understanding. Are any of them in the process of wanting to develop? No, not at this moment in time. But again, you know, I've said to them, when you're ready, if you want to, we'll have a talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David's asked a question. <laughs> and I'm not sure if he's trying to plug your UK tour. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> He has to ask a question. What are your plans on a national tour, on TV work, etc.? What are your do you goals? Know, do you know, Paul, I, I'm a true believer in what will be, will be. Whatever's meant to come your way, whatever yeah. it is that Spirit have planned for you, will just naturally evolve and drop into your lap. That being said, I'm really looking forward to working with David H spiritual medium and Kerry Stanfar psychic medium going into 2024 because we've got some tour dates coming up very very soon. Yeah. Um, but anything else that comes my way, then if it's meant to be, it will be. I think the challenge is whether David could be your manager. That's whether <laughs> <laughs> or whether he'd want to be. To be fair, to David. <laughs> anyway, anyway. Oh God, I've got to take it seriously because there's, uh, there's. Okay, let's get back to mediumship because, you know, we sit here and we sometimes forget what it's like to connect to spirit, and not not forget, but but as in take for granted our connection and i wanted to ask you the process that you go through when you connect with a loved one so you'll sit on collective people will recognize your background bill's on tonight we're watching collective consciousness what is happening when you say i believe i've got man here uh, a gentleman here but he's telling his dad how, how does that feel for you what senses are working and can you build that picture up for people at home because Firstly, it's a brave thing to do it online. You've really got to have a good connection and trust your link you're working with. And so can you, can you talk me through that process for you? I kind of want to say from start to finish. Yeah, from start to finish. The most simplest way that I can put it, Paul, is that I work on the clear senses as we... As we, I work on the senses uh, or the clear senses like we do with our, our natural senses. Can I be yeah. like teacher today? Can I, yeah, can I, I'm so sorry to be, because again, uh, people will sit at home, clear sentience, what is that? So that's what I was just about to say. Oh, so sorry, today. mate. That's right. <laughs> the, clear are like the senses that we have that we know within the physical where we see, yeah. we hear, we smell, we taste and we feel. The clairs work in exactly the same way but it's the medium that experiences yeah. that. So when I'm ready and I'm open and I've got that spirit link communicator that wants to convey message, I go with the way that that communicator wants me to work and convey that message. So if they want to, for example, speak clairaudiently, so they want to talk to me and, and I convey message through what it is that I'm hearing, then that's the way that I'll work. If they want to show themselves to me so I can physically see that spirit communicator standing in front of me, then I will yeah. give a description of what it is that they are showing me at that moment in time. They always work with me with tastes, as most you know, the viewers will know that have, you know, tuned into collective yeah. consciousness. Yeah. So I always get the taste of the smells, the feeling. I, 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 I just go with the flow. I just go with however it is that that communicator feels comfortable to convey message through me being the vessel and nothing more than that. What about doubt? We always have doubt, but it's, a, it, it's, it's pushing doubt to one side and going with trust, which is the hardest, the hardest tool, I would say, that we have to learn going through the process of building up our own mediumship and yeah. uniqueness um yeah. trust trust and trust if they give you a lime green elephant with pink polka dots on it it's not for you to sit there and dissect it and to question it it's for you to give it because that could just be the little golden nugget that really strengthens that link in that message where the recipient can say, oh, my God, I've got an ornament that looks exactly the same as that that was gifted to me on our anniversary, for example. Yeah. So trust, 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 and trust even more. How do you feel, also, again, this is around mediumship, 
and this is something that's happened quite a lot in my mediumship well the the person will come in they'll sit down for the reading they'll hold their arms and say, well if this is true you'll get the password that my mum gave me before she went over how do you deal with that david Bill, David, let's call you David. So, yeah, <laughs> just... I, I, I don't know what many a name in my time. Really, it's because I've got you on my screen, mate. I'm so sorry, David. <laughs> I've got you looking at me on my screen. <laughs> How do I deal with that? How do I deal with that? Before I start any public demonstration, I always put it out there in a very simple context. I'm a medium. I'm not a magician. What it is that I get given to me from your past loved ones, family members and friends, I will convey to the best of my ability and what it is that they give to me. I yeah. might not necessarily get a name. I might not necessarily get a date or a code or a password, but I will work within that true authenticity of your loved one by giving you as much as it is that they want me to convey and share during that time through message. It's as simple yeah. as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, I've, in, ashamedly, in the past, I've gone looking for it. Yeah, we all have. Because, because, because I guess a part of what I'm doing is being of service and wanting to give them that validation that their loved one's okay. Because we'd all yeah. love to do that. We'd all love to say that that is okay. He's just giving me this password. He just wants to tell how much he loves you. But that's so difficult, isn't it? You, you kind of, You've got to be honest to the person, but they'll hang on that. And, but you don't also want to smash their belief system by not giving it. So then you find yourself in this in, insane situation where you end up looking for it. And as you know full well, if you look for it, you don't generally don't get it because your mind kicks in. Yeah, conscious mind comes into play and then it just destroys what it is that you've got going on. So I always roll. I always like to say, always roll with spirit. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, as as I've said, and as you very well know, we are just that vessel. We're just the voice. Yes. We convey the message. We're yeah. nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. So yeah. that's how I roll with it, Paul. Yeah. What you see is what you get. Yeah. Yeah. And Christine, hi, Christine. She's back on. Have you ever been contacted by any celebrities, Bill? I have, but I can't say because of confidentiality. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the king, the king, and uh, the king will have his hitman on us. Oh, <laughs> just said that. I'm joking. That's a joke. What about if? Because uh, I've had a few uh, unsavory characters from spirit side and famous people from spirit side. Could you disclose in any anybody famous you've had come in? Do you know what? Spiritually, Paul, I've connected in with Doris Stokes. Have you? Oh, I'm yeah. so jealous. I think I've got a, I've got, a, I literally got a book here somewhere. Uh, I was looking at the other day. Voices. No, it's not. Oh gosh, can't find. It. Always when, when you want something, it's never there. Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, this is I've been reading this one. Uh, host, host of voices, yeah. Doris. Mixed reviews with Doris, Doris, isn't there? Yeah, well, look, at the end of the day, there's going to be mixed reviews about any, any medium that's <laughs> yeah. out there. Because as we've touched on, you're not always going to be somebody's cup of tea. And that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, that's absolutely fine. So yeah. ironic, though, that I've, I've made that connection or that communication with Doris because she was affiliated with Wimbledon Spiritualist Church. Ah. And that's where mum took me when I first had my awakening or my awareness to spirit. Right. And Wimbledon was the church that I was taken to. So it's funny that it all kind of like evolved and happened under that one roof and it's come from my belief from there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Really interesting. I've had it in a reading where my most unusual was the last king of Russia, the Tsar. Wow. Uh, and this guy had come for a reading because I'd connected with his... A, a sibling and there was a specific key piece of information i gave him he came back for more um not expecting to have a reading or, or have any kind of contact because he didn't really believe in this but i was aware of the last king of russia came in 
to his energy and started communicating. And I said, do you have any idea why you have the light? Because this guy <laughs> knew nothing about this guy. Uh, he sat there and he went, what is he saying? I just said, he's talking about you must publish it. And it turned out this guy had just come back from four weeks in St. Petersburg where he was researching the king. And there was um, arguably, and don't quote me because we're live, uh, there was uh, talk of um, the king having a nervous breakdown. Why, And that's why Rasputin was able to weave his web of deceit and create the Russian revolution because the king wasn't in full control of his power because he was losing his mind. Wow. So, so that, and, and for him to turn around and say to it, mate, you know, when you get this information, sometimes you think, okay, is this me? <laughs> Where have I gone with this? But well, then to, he turned around and said, look, I'm actually writing a book on him. And I've just come back from St. Petersburg. I was very much in awe. And like, thank you, Spirit. That was, that was awesome, <laughs> you know, and <laughs> to give him. Thank you, Spirit moments, yeah. But, but it was also validation for him as well. So, yeah, I've got lots of stories like that. I should write a book one day. You should do. Angela Martina, hello. And she's asked, do you see the Spirit Messenger in front of you or in your mind? Both. Great question. Both. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was it, did it start first in your mind, then externalize? No, it, it, it actually started physically seeing. Physically right. seeing. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> obvious question. A lot of people would say, if I'm physically seeing, I'm out of that door. I think it was Stephen Holbrook that says in his, uh, talk at the beginning don't worry if i'm seeing them i'm out that door okay so he i think i think he's more clairsentient i'm not sure don't quote me uh and we'd love to interview Stephen if you ever say yes but um but Stephen has been around the block for a lot of years and and uh he's been working what 30 odd years Stephen, hasn't he holbrook um and i remember watch one what once watching him by the way, I've not had a Christmas drink, by the way. So this is not alcohol, me getting tongue-tied. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, he he would be scared. But other mediums, like I I get a mixture of both. And and do they ever make you jump? Or yeah, yeah, it it does make you jump, doesn't it? Because yeah. I had someone in my cabin, uh, and this guy was he put his face up, and I thought it was my son, saying, you know, Dad, come on, yeah, you got to come yeah. in for dinner. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it was spirit come through. Yeah, but it's yeah, so yeah. clear. It can make you jump. It's not fearful in any way. I don't know about you, Bill. Do you ever get? No, I, I don't ever feel scared. I think my first visualization was dad. So, yeah, oh, okay. I, I always knew because one of dad's sayings would, would always be it's the living, um, the living that will hurt you, not the dead. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, that was always one of his sayings. So I found that to be rather comforting. Yeah. To be able to actually see him after he had passed. Yeah. You know, I felt I felt special that like he'd come to visit me. And I think that probably just broke or breached that point of where, you know, you would be on that border or that spectrum of being scared. Um, seeing somebody else, for example, or not knowing who it was. Um, but because he'd always said to me, it's living at you're not the dead. It was him that I saw first. I just thought to myself, anybody else that come, they're coming with an intent of love and light anyway. Yes. Um, there's no malice. Um, so it doesn't scare me. Makes me jump. Yeah, if you're not expecting it, if you've, got, you've left yourself open, you've not closed yourself down. But does it scare me? No, it doesn't. No. No, because most things come through with love. But I spent a lot of time not sure about that. Uh-huh. And when I was developing, there was a, quite a few things. I remember <laughs> <laughs> sitting up all night one night because I'd seen quite a lot of phenomenon in this circle and it scared me so much. And there was nobody else in the house. I just I literally sat up all night with the light on. And my guide was like, for heaven's sakes, there's nothing to worry about. Yeah, but this this is not great. This is a I felt really uneasy, really quite, quite scared. scared. So, 
uh, it, I had to learn to get through that fear. Fear can be a barrier. Yeah. And um, once you realize that, that there's no such, well, the, the fear is just what we create. It's, no, it's, just, it's just love. They come from any vibration of love. Angela's asking another great question. Can you explain seeing spirit when you wake but are still dreaming about them? So kind of in that, I believe she means in that wake sleeping state. It's almost like that astral travel type of state, isn't it? Yeah, great question. May, maybe making a reference to all that repetitive dream state and yeah. i get i still get a lot of that now and i know that that's not actually a dream um and it's the same type of scenario that presents itself so i go back to being a, a young child i go into the house i go into the back room dad's sitting in the chair and i'm like what are you doing here you yeah. died yeah like, i've come back to see you and that yeah. is repetitive for me that happens over and over and over again so i know it's not a dream i know that that's dad's way of just maybe just checking in even though that i know he stands beside me every minute of every hour of every day i suppose that dream maybe comes into fruition or into play at times when i need it personally yeah. when i need it with events or things that are going on within my life and i just need that reassurance or that confirmation so yeah. i hope that that kind of like breaks it down and explains it in a in the context that angela can yeah. relate to yeah yeah uh yes i see them but i don't realize i'm awake but still dreaming until a medium pointed it out mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. okay so also what I wanted to talk about, um, Phil, is guides. And now yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a massive subject within our work. And there's a lot of misunderstandings around their role and what they do for us. Are you aware of your team that work with you? Yeah. Awesome. And, and how was that for you to develop in that relationship? Was that something from a child or was that something you've worked out i mean i know guides are changing as we change but there's always one or two that pretty much stay the same throughout yeah. our life but is there one specific one or two or three that you work or you're aware that you I've work got, with i've got a few, a, a few of them but i I've, I've always been quite nosy with regards to wanting <laughs> to understand so like of course look they know everything about us so why can't we Breach and pose that question yeah. with them. Tell me about yourself. Show me. Show me what you look like. Give me an idea. Give me an understanding of where it is that you come from. Um, tell me the story of your life. How did you pass the spirit yourself? Why is it that you're here? What is it that you're assigned to do whilst you're um, with me? Um, so I've always kind of like been really nosy, Paul. Yeah. Of wanting to know why they're with me um, to just get a slightly deeper understanding and that works for me that might not necessarily work for others so there's no right or wrong reason with regards to the way that we connect in with our guides um, so I'm just putting it out there so that you know people that maybe aren't experiencing let's say for example visualization or a deeper understanding of the guides that's fine you know yeah. we all work within our own different capacities and understandings but for me I want to know about them. I want to know why you're here. What is it that you're going to help me do? So when I get a sense of you being with me or I see you or I feel you, I know that I'm working on a certain vibration. So for example, um, I've got I've got a power animal, I've got a I've got a, a gorilla that stands in beside me. They, this is all about power, this is about strength. When I get a sense of him just uh, being in behind me, then I know that if I'm conveying message to a, a a recipient i know that i'm going in on a strength and a powerful purpose there's a meaning of why that um spirit guide is coming to work with me for whatever reason that may be so i trust it and i go with that dad as i say will stand and walk beside me at all times my my mate what i call my main guide and here's the bonkers bit that people think feels lost these marbles <laughs> my main guide is from another planet and I simply named him X because he wouldn't give me his name. But oh, I simply no. named him X. Um, and he's about seven foot, built like a brick, 
you know what house and um very muscular um and is very pale um blue in skin coloring and uh, he's the one that's pushed me all through my development when i first started out developing potentially syrian then or has he told you where he's from or another planet another that's always said it's interesting yeah. that i can't always quote this story in a book i must i must do my research there is a medium that, that there's a famous book out there where she was working with a guy that was a red indian and then after 20 years he said are you ready to reveal myself uh and she's like pardon <laughs> and that's the thing it's about building up your relationship because he, he turned out to be an alien and she was like how dare you deceive me and he said well um there's a great question there from linda i'll come back to that linda don't worry um but he said if you if you thought i was an alien at the beginning you would probably wouldn't have worked with me that's very true isn't it so linda's asked how do you know who your guides are is are yeah is there anything specific you could advise people to get to know their guides or maybe work for you just be nosy and ask questions yeah yeah. And you'll get it when you're supposed to get it. Some of us won't get it instantaneously. You know, even when I'm um, teaching, Paul, and we're connecting yeah. with our guides, not all students will get a sense of seeing their guide or knowing who their guide is. They might just work on a vibration. They might work on a sense of feeling, a colour, a smell. But they will associate that to their guide because it's repetitive every time that they open themselves up to work. And yeah. then over a period of time, they will build on that. And through trust, they then get the information that it is that they're seeking. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I can offer to that, Linda, uh, to kind of find out as well. They will kind of communicate through the dreams and if you're open to it so this is going to sound really random i used to write to my guides and put the letter under the pillow in the sleep set my intention like to get to know you and uh it took a little while i saw them first before and then i dreamt about them um so so be open to it that's what i would say uh and like bill said because the problem is you know you hear some people well, I've got this guide and he's asked me to move to Dorset because I'm going to start working down there. I'm going to sell my house tomorrow. <laughs> well, I'm not being funny. There, there is, you know, the, you might pick up energy that's not particularly in your best interest because you're opening your learning. So I, I totally agree with you. You've got to be nosy. You want to develop that relationship between yourself and your guide because they could tell you anything, couldn't they? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah and this is the problem with the unseen world we're kind of in this spiritual ocean aren't we with lots of energies around us that are swimming around us and i'm not sure that this is all love and light although i like to think it's all love and light there is some little bit of murky stuff as well but never mind it is what it is but that discernment that you talked about earlier i think will really help you on your journey with guides but it's so difficult yeah. guides i know mediums that are working that don't know their guides is that a good thing or bad thing? If they're a good medium, does it matter? If they're giving accurate and good communication and giving healing within that, does it matter? So I don't think it's always necessary to know, but I think it's a good to have that support system in place. You know, <laughs> I've sat there. I've got 100 people in front of me. Please, please, please don't let me down tonight. <laughs> <laughs> But there's easier things to do, mate, like watch Match of the Day on a Saturday night. You know? <laughs> so, why, do, why do we do it, Paul? Why do we put ourselves through it? Why do we do it? I don't know. That's a great question because for me, it, is, for me, it literally comes back down to my health. And I remember asking the question, why am I here? Why did that happen? And not having any real side effects from a brain tumour. And being told that the tumour had crystallised. And I felt that was like a miracle. And I was able to cut it away with not too much damage. Obviously the obvious. But apart from that, <laughs> I'm a little bit crazy. It's just, it's just, it, and that's where it started for me. But, so there's a level of service, isn't there? You know, um, I was asked from a charity, uh, what do you charge? And I 
you know, sometimes if it's a bit, you know, I'm not sure, yeah, I'll charge for my petrol money, uh, maybe a little bit for my, my time. time. But but there's those that I won't charge anything, completely nothing. So and that in itself of being a service is a really rewarding thing. Yeah, I think I think I did one recently. We raised nine hundred pounds for our ambulance, which is fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah, and and all those. So and that, and that's another thing. Um, I, why do we choose that for you though, Bill? Why why do you put yourself for it? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> I, I, I I I still believe it's harder online because you've got a presence. Yeah, you've got to trust so much more. Yeah. You have, you yeah. have to, you know, like, I think when we serve publicly, correct me, you might, you might think slightly differently here, but when we're within that public domain, we're feeling the energy, we're blending in with our surroundings, and that almost eases us into it sometimes. Look, all mediums are psychic. Not all psychics are mediums. mediums. Okay, so sometimes, sometimes, some mediums will work psychically and mediumistically. And when you're within that public space, that's so much more easier because you're yes. blending with that individual psychically yes. who's sat in front of you. Um, when you're working behind a screen, it's purely what spirit yes. are dropping in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that enhances your ability, that enhances your development in terms of better mediumship, etc. So it is a difficult thing. But then on that, I kind of want to throw a curveball in that. Do you not think, because we still, I still believe the, the magic in what, there is a magic, and I don't mean to underplay that, and I don't mean to make it sensationalised, but the magic of spirit of creation and when we connect psychic is in latin word for soul mm -hmm. so even we're still connecting on a mediumistic level and this is the problem with human concepts that we have these ideas of how we work uh, i try to demolish that and break it down but i still think there's a level where we can connect like on a remote view Mm -hmm. when we remotely view somebody and you can go back i don't know if you've tried this i i do i in the past i've done aura work where i've reviewed people and viewed them from the other side of the world j just as a practice and then mm -hmm. send them a letter saying this is what i picked up and this is what i felt so i still think on that online there potentially could be that level of psychic in there i'm not sure you know, because I didn't think it was ever going to work on Zoom, mate. Sorry, Christine, I'm going off on a tangent. Uh, Christine's asked the question, did having your brain tumour change your personality, Paul? <laughs> Ask my ex-wife. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> my mum still loves me, though, Christine. I saw the matters. She's still here. She's doing well. She's 84. Now, all joking aside, yes. And I think... Like Bill, with your experience, Bill, losing your dad, you're not the same person, are you? No. You might not have recognised that as a child, but when you have such trauma, I mean, I, I think having a brain tumour and recovering is nothing compared to grief. The only thing I would say, for me and my experience, was more about, I'm a lucky, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to swear, B word, I'm lucky. You know, and that was at that point in me, I asked, what is it about? Why am I here? I started to open those spiritual questions within me, which then opened within me. The only thing I struggled with in life, and even now I struggle with it, is a minutiae. When we worry about the little things, how many people are doing this? What are we doing that for? And I still get caught up in it. And I'm like, Paul, what are you doing? I have to have a talk to myself because a lot of things in our especially in the social media now is just not relevant and we've just got to come back to self and, and realizing that even yes i believe in past lives but i don't know about you mate do you believe in past lives yeah but, but we, we still, still have, have to live, live this life, life don't, don't we, we? To, to, to the, the fullest, fullest. Yeah. Yeah. and that's and that's what brings me a lot of passion with my mediumship that we are motivating people to be able to live their life knowing that life continues and their loved ones are okay 
Yeah. And they have this passion of moving forward. You know, mental health is such a major problem in, in this country and across the world, especially in the times that we live in with the wars that are going on at the moment. It's really quite depressing. But, you know, just got to keep positive and just got to keep praying. And Donna's asked a question. Hi, Donna. Good to see you. Happy New Year, by the way. I should have been saying yeah, it all day. But Happy, Happy New Year, Year to everyone. Does sitting in the power every day help our guys to get to know us? Great question, mate. I think so, because you're making that effort. You're putting that time in to sit within that space. Just yeah. you and then, as I said earlier on, I have my team meeting every day, whether that be for 10 minutes or an hour. That's my time with my guides, my angelic helpers, my inspirers, my time with spirit, with nobody else, just us, to go into whatever it is that needs to be addressed, understood, learned, disciplined, whatever. Um, so, yeah, I would wholeheartedly say 100% yes to your question there, Donna. Yeah, it's a great question. Thank you for that, Donna. It is. And and that's another, um, what's the word? An, not an expectation, but maybe an understanding about when you're going into that, Bill. What was the first experiences of that like? Because you're going to sit in, set the intention of sitting and connecting with your spirit team. Did you have any expectation? I didn't have no expectation whatsoever. As I say, I, I'm one of these who just firmly believes in natural evolution. What will be, will be. Um, I suppose I've gone through physical life of having expectations and then being let down and dropped from very great heights. So I went into my spiritual growth and understandings with having no expectation whatsoever and allowing spirit to take me and place me where it is that they felt I should be. And I yeah. still do that to this day. If you want me to do something different next week, then show me. Give me an understanding. Just go into it a little bit deeper so that I'm prepared and I'm ready for where it is that you're now going to take me. Yeah. on this next part of the adventure i like to call it yeah yeah absolutely and that adventure is not going to stop it's going to keep going and generally people uh like yourself bill you know you don't ever get to retire you could be doing this up until the day that we like the queen yeah. you know being of service you don't yeah. really get much of a choice because it's not a job is it it's a way of life and it's 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 a natural the way I like to put it, Paul, is it's a natural healing process. Yeah. Can I ask you one more question? Yeah, go on. If this is like more like a Chris, Christmas wish list question, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> if there was one thing, oh, okay, might be able to squeeze that one in, Stace. If there was one thing you could change about mediumship, what would it be? If there's one thing that I could change about yeah. mediumship, uh, That's that a big is one, a isn't really it? good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yeah, I am. I am. I am. <laughs> if there's one thing that I could change about mediumship, I wouldn't want to change mediumship per se. What I would like to see is that through mediumship, everybody that serves as a medium doesn't see it as a competition yeah. and a battle. <sighs> because how can I put this, Paul, without it opening another can of worms and everybody <laughs> wanting a live okay. deal on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a competition. But yeah, I know it's okay. <laughs> My siblings always used to load the gun and I'd always fire it. <laughs> so it's no, it's no different today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What I'd like to see is everybody working within the same ethos and ethic of the healing and the love. And it's great to see people grow. Don't get me wrong. It's great to see people uh, aspire to want to achieve the very best within their own medium uh, 
mediumship qualities and wherever the world takes them then so be it absolutely fantastic but when i see other mediums putting other mediums down yeah that's where i draw the line yeah because it's like hold on a minute we're all working with this or we should all be working in the same ethos of delivering that message of love and healing to the recipient it doesn't matter if joe Bloggs does it or i does it whoever does it that doesn't matter but just be kind just yeah. be nice help each other grow don't yeah. put each other down yeah i amen to that that's what i'd like to say yeah yeah, I'm just quickly, I'm just going to quickly cover Stace's question. Is Hi, Stace. Have you ever had to turn up to a demonstration and say, you haven't actually received anything from Spirit? What did you do to cover yourself? I've been very lucky. Spirit have always come in. Well, being a member of the Starship Enterprise, I've always gone one to beam up, Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be nice if that happened. But I do, I do know a story of a very famous medium that I'm not going to name on here. was very honest and told me at a lecture at the Arthur Finley College that it happened to him once of about 100 people. And he said, I just said, look, I'm so sorry. There's nothing coming through. And do you know what? He said, I did a QA. and a I offered him a refund, did a QA and a with them if they wanted to stay, and they did. And I enjoyed the evening. But I think the point is it's the person's honesty. I've seen mediums doing it that just go psychic, which, okay, if people want to go psychic, fine. But it kind of kills the potential of the evening. So I think honesty is key there for me. I, I take my hat off to that medium because I could 100% honestly say that if I turn up to them and I didn't get nothing, I would sit back down. I yeah. would never, ever try to make something fit it's not because point. that's just not the way that we work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Bill Hughes, thank you so much for being interviewed tonight. But also on behalf of everybody, I don't know if I can say this, but on behalf of everybody that you've done your readings for, messages for collective consciousness, I'm sure everyone will thank you for your effort, your time, and bringing your expertise, your mediumship, and those healing messages through to everybody. I want to wish you a, a very happy Christmas and a, an even happier 2024. I know it's going to be absolutely brilliant for you next year. Things are going to take off, but just remember us, mediums here on SBTV. Don't forget about us. So... But we'll keep an eye on what's going on. We'll be looking out for you. And hopefully I'll, I'll hopefully get to meet you in the flesh. I'd like to meet you and work with you one yeah, day in the flesh. We've that would got be to awesome. make that happen. Yeah. If you, well, people. yeah, just be careful. Coming up to Norfolk, you need a passport. That's all I'm going to say. All right? <laughs> you, have past, you have to get passed through Suffolk. I'm sorry, Suffolk, by the way. I, used to, I grew up there. <laughs> but it's been absolutely brilliant. I also want to thank everybody that watches Spiritual Talk and supported us since we started in August. It's been a great journey, and we're, we're still going to continue. We've got some great guests coming on and for 2024. So for just for now, though, guys, I just want to wish everybody a happy new year and a prosperous new year. And we will see you on the other side. The other thing I will say, though, Emily Bake is on tomorrow night. Don't miss Emily. She is a fantastic medium. OK. And who was that? Oh, I missed that, Richard. Tara and Tara at eight o'clock. Tara? Cara, all right, <laughs> Cara. I can't hear properly in his headphone. I'm getting told off. Cara, I'm so sorry, Cara. Uh, I have to turn my earpiece up. <laughs> anyway, guys, it's been great. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you in the new year on the 11th of January. We're back at our new time at 8 p.m. Because someone's not about. I've got a Philly slot. Take care. Thanks, you. mate. Thanks. I appreciate it. And we will see everyone in the new year. Take care, everybody. Bye for now.